Good night, everyone. Good night, all. Anybody want to join us, yeah? <clears throat> good night, good night. Hmm. I'm going to the city, you're looking pretty <clears throat> until some people join us. Good night, Gary. How are you, my brother? It's good to see you. We're just going to sit here for a little bit and see if anybody else wants to join us. Maybe, maybe not, but um, however many of you may join, we are going to have this conversation tonight, um, no matter what. I'm right, put on my glasses just in case I have to say hi to anybody who's joining. Hey, Mark, how are you? I'm good, you? Hello, princess. Um, you can't join me on video, Marjorie. Um, it's not possible. It's a live. We're not doing a, an interview. Maybe later on I might encourage people to join, but not right now. Great. I'm glad you're good. Good night, Comrade Sharon. Michelle. Hi, Michelle. It banks. Hi, Michelle. Um... Let's wait and see if some more people will join us. Um, and um, we'll see how this works. Share. Can you please just share the live and invite other people to join? That, that will help. Um, Michelle, Sharon, Mark, Jerry, Princess. Um, be great if you could share. And um, invite other people um, to come and watch. Good night, Marjorie. Um, maybe later on, I, I, if you want, I will bring you on, Marjorie. Looks like you, you have something to say. But so maybe later on, I might, you know, that might be a good idea. I don't know. But share the live and invite other people to come on. And let us wait a little bit before, before we start. Um... I don't know, I've not seen a regular thing up this side. There's something wrong, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Good night, Ma. Good night, Marva. If I'm the first lady, who is the other one? <laughs> hey, Marva. I don't understand you, Marva, anyway. Now you come in this side. Huh? I'm the first lady of Jews and I need a first gentleman or another first lady. But, um, oh, okay. I'll get your mama. Uh, because I saw the thing that you, um, Marjorie, I saw the thing that you were doing it earlier, so I, I thought uh, as much. Can we share the live and get some other people to join us before we start, please? Andrea, what's up? War room busy. Huh? This is not alcohol, this is um, lime and honey, the tip of gin, because I'm a little stuffy. So I'm keeping it close to, to keep my throat good. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dalton. Thank you very much. Um... Share the life, can you? All right, so we'll see you another. Can you share the life? Can you just share, get some other people on? <laughs> never mind, Andrea, never mind, never mind, never mind. Talk afterwards. Can we just share the life, please? Get other people to come on. Um. I don't know, something missing from my phone. I'm not seeing the thing on the top. And, um, I don't know. Is everyone seeing me and hearing me? 
because I'm not seeing the thing on top. Share the live, please, and invite other people to come on. This thing not moving. No, I'm gonna... All right, so let's share the live now. And um, I get it going um, one more minute and we will start the ball rolling. Hello, Comrade Nava. How are you, Pastor? You good? And then let us just do this. Um, share the live and bring the PMP delegates and comrades on. As much as them as you can share it with, I, I don't know. But, um, Sonia, good night, Sonia. How are you? Good night, Sonia. Good night, good night, good night, good night, all. We're going to give it a few more minutes. Let's get a few more people on, and then we start. Um, I think we can. Ten past eight is a good time to start. So, let me just um, start now. Good night, everyone. Good night, comrades. We haven't done a live for a while. I was kind of hoping that um, the last one I did was the last one for the year. I took a personal decision a couple of weeks ago that um, I was going to, having heard that there is an election in the, in the air, having heard that there is the possibility of an election in the air, I took a personal decision. And I'm speaking for the rest of the, 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 the resistance. I'm speaking for me. I took a personal decision that I was going to just um, chill. Don't, don't do any, no, no, no aggravations. Give the, give the PMP um, councillor candidates and councillors them a chance to go out there, go, go see if they can get the PMP people to come out, come vote for them. And I took that decision that I would just, you know, lay low on the social media thing and, um, and let them go to see if they can get PMP people to vote. I also took a personal decision that I was going out on the street on my own, not a resistance team, just me as I normally do before a resistance team. And I've been to many, many places, many divisions, in some dark corners, some places where people have not seen them counselor or them counselor candidate for many moons. And I've spoken to many PMP people. And um, the mood out there in, 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 in preparing for a possible local government election is not as, as it should be. In some places, the mood is okay, but in far too many places, the mood is not. And so there's just one problem after the next. So comrades, tonight, I came on specifically to talk about this OT fear cloth matter. Because here I was thinking that we put that matter to rest already and there was nothing more to be said. And here I was thinking that the leadership of the People's National Party would have seen the wisdom in not to proceed with this matter. But lo and behold, the president and leader of the People's National Party um, took it upon himself the other day and still promoting this man as the founder of the People's National Party. And it did piss us all off in an awful kind of way. Because here we are thinking that this nitwit, this dim-witted man, 
that you, the PMP delegates, went out and elected. Sold your votes and sold your soul to this half idiot, this embarrassment of a party leader. Went out and placing on his social media page, celebrating this man mm -hmm. who looks like a thief. Color the picture of the man who looks like a thief and calling him the leader, the founder of the People's National Party. Now I want to say this, and I'm going to be clear here in what I'm going to do tonight. Tonight I am going to take the plaster off. Tonight I am going to remove the band-aid. Tonight I am going to spring it wide open because in the first instance in July when we were talking about it we didn't touch on things that we thought that some things could you know should stay and we shouldn't touch on them we just leave them alone but apparently there is still this great vast conspiracy to remove the manlies from the annals of history of the people's national party apparently welcome welcome comrade melverton apparently this vast conspiracy is much wider than we thought. So we decided to go look into it and dig a little deeper. And we are going to tell you how we came up with our analysis and where it has led us. And let me be clear from the outset that this, this conspiracy, it is just that. A conspiracy to undermine the People's National Party and remove the manly name from the annals of the party history. So let us just lay out some things. Norman Manley founded the People's National Party in 1938. He had a group of people around him, just like George Washington had a group of people around him. George Washington had John Adams, who later became his vice president and then president. George Washington had Alexander Hamilton, who is basically the creator of the, of, the, of the monetary and financial system in America. George Washington had Thomas Jefferson, who was the youngest among them. I think Jefferson was about 32 or 33. George Washington had Benjamin Franklin, who is probably, I think, Benjamin Franklin is the only founder, only one of the founders, that group of founders, that signed all three documents that emancipated America from Britain. So George Washington had a group of men about him. But if you look in the history books, you will see pictures of George Washington and his crew. And what you will see in, that, in those pictures is George Washington always standing up in the middle of things, and the crew surrounded him and him directing the orchestra and it go on. So it was with Norman Manley. And I'm not going back into no years and all of that that Michelle will do whenever she comes on. I'm not going back into when the idea came up because Edna Manley told us that people were bombarding Norman Manley for years for him to put together a political movement. And he was thinking about it. And he never acted on it. So we know that. We also know that there was a group of people around Norman Manley. Eric Bell, Howard Cook, some man named Domingo. There was one woman, Greta Fowler, around Norman Manley. But Norman Manley was the fixture. You know, in history, there is this thing that you call fixed time in history. And the fixed time in history are events, events that happened in history that cannot be changed. 1938 and the formation of the People's National Party by Norman Manley, that is one such history, cannot be changed. Mark Golden, you will never be successful in changing the history of the People's National Party. Never, ever. Let me just get that out of the way. Well, and you're a fool's heron. And you're a dim-witted, stupid arse who don't know what you're doing. And we have come to the conclusion that Mark Golden don't know no history of the PMP. 
He doesn't know the history of the PMP. He has never read any history of the PMP. He has no knowledge and understanding of the PMP. So therefore, you have to trace it and back it up a little bit and see where him get that foolishness from. Because if him not know nothing about PMP and him vote JLP in every elections, Mark Golden vote for Delroy Chuck in every elections. And gripe about the quality of candidates that the PMP put to run against Delroy Chuck. He can't support them quality of candidates or so send support Delroy Chuck. Having established that Mark is just a pawn in the, in the whole game, then we have to go back. I mean, way, way back. We have to go way back to find my, the handkerchief to get my eyes wide. Yeah. So I'm going back and looking at where this thing started when people like Paul Buchanan and Arnold Bertram and Siaga Nice and Michael um, Burke and all of those people start writing those foolishness about OT Fair Care, start to, start to push OT Fair Club in the middle of the PMP history, start to look for a space to, to put him. And when you go back to that, you have to go way, way, way back from 2013. And tonight, tonight when I'm done, Lots of people will be crying tears. Tonight when I'm done, Percival Noel James Patterson is the center of this conspiracy. And when we talked about it the first time, I thought I would keep him name out of it. But no, no more. No more. You see, there are some things that you just can't remain quiet about. And I'm saying to the PMP people, the leaders and all the bigwigs and MPs them inside there, I know the whole only in there is telling on herself that only just going along to get along and uh, things will change as long as I stay there and sitting at this little table and having seat at, at, at the table and all of that. I'm not telling herself that. But I'd like to tell her tonight that some things you can't remain quiet on. How how, how do you sit there and allow Mark Golden to be out there trying to push out the manly name out of the People's National Party and inserting this man with a picture that looks like it's his mugshot, look like him go up, look like him be a rest him or something in Haiti, and that's his mugshot. Mark went as far as color the mugshot and put him out as founder of the People's National Party. I'm coming back to the beginning. Huh? The PMP people across the island, very, very unnerved by it. They're not worried about it because they've come to the conclusion that nobody can take Norman Manley out of the People's National Party. But they are unnerved. They are unnerved because they can't understand why, what is happening? Why? Why is Mark doing this? Mark who don't know nothing about PMP. Mark who was never a part of PMP. Mark who just came in a PMP the other day when Omar Davis gave him um, to the spalling seat. So people are asking, why? Why is he doing this? And I'm here tonight to tell you the why. When PJ went to the NEC the other day and confessed that he didn't give us Mark and, um, and him come to anoint Mark and call him, him destiny. I hear that him say that in, in NEC that people out here giving him grief. Think it's a grief yet? First of all, Noel James Pat, you think is it is it you think it's a grief yet? Good night, Ivan. You think it's a grief yet? Watch me now. So let me tell you where this thing began. This whole conspiracy started around 2005, early 2006. And it started with P.J. Patterson deciding to leave as leader and allow the party to elect a new leader. What did he do when he made that decision? What did he do? 
he announced to the NEC that he's leaving. Then he announced to the NEC the period for campaigning, which was a whole long period of time. I don't remember what it took me. It was a year, nine, ten months worth of campaigning. I'm not complaining about it because I made a lot of money then supporting Omar Davis. But PJ went to the NEC and he announced this long period of time for campaigning. Which undoubtedly fractured the party and, and started the whole division in the party. After he announced that period of time for campaigning, which was the first move on his chessboard to control and to be divide and control. The first move. But let us go way back. I could pause this, you know. <clears throat> and go way back. 1997, I think, when Manly left. When the tag people from, you know, and, and share because PJ's got up diarrhea tonight. <clears throat> I am drinking my onion thing. When Michael Manley decided to retire from politics, we had an NEC meeting down at the conference room, down at the conference center. And for the first time in our history, for the first time since PJ had been party chairman and Michael had been party leader, PJ walked into the conference ahead of Michael. For the very first time, we've never seen anything like it before. But that is what happened. When Michael left, and the runoff between PJ and uh, Portia Simpson. It was shortly, immediately after, not, not, not shortly, immediately after PJ became, um, came out the victor in that election, that internal elections. Immediately, he gathered his team, mm. his team of the black intelligentsia, a whole heap of black guys, and um, middle class black guys who he has made tremendously rich. All of them now multi-millionaires, very rich. And that was his crew. That group of black, the columns of the black intelligentsia. And PJ's campaign slogan going into the election was Fresh Prince. And then they came out with Black Man Time. And nobody thought about it at the time, but at the time when PJ used that thing, I talk about black man time, people thought it was a shade at Edward Seaga. But it wasn't. It wasn't. It was a shade at the Manleys. It's black man time. It was a shade, a deliberate shade at the Manleys. Black man time. And he campaigned on that. When he attained the prime ministership of the country, P.J. Patterson set about destroying every structure in the party. Every structure. He locked down the party school, all of the committees, all of the commissions in the party. He locked them down. Every structure in the party. And Bogues, we know your hustle. We mark them and stuff. But Bogues was pissed. That the party school was locked down. The Vernon Arnett School of Political Education. PJ locked it down. He locked down every commission in the party. And his sole focus as party leader was to build a election machinery. And that is what he set about doing. Building an election machinery. Not a party machinery. Not a political organization. An election machinery. That is what he set about building. Once, from the moment he become leader, he destroyed every structure in the party and built that political, not that election machinery, which was designed to satisfy him, him needs, to satisfy him need for to be the longest serving prime minister, to be the prime minister that wins the most of the party, that wins the most election. All those things were part of his leaderboard the various parts so the first thing he did was became leader and start with the excitement about black man time now during his 14 years of party leader 
14 years as party leader and prime minister. Every now and then when he gives a speech about Norman Manley, he would mention the other guys who were there, including O.T. Fairclough, Howard Cook, the guy named Domingo. None of them ever mentioned Greta Fowler because she was the only woman and lots of them never think she's worthy of being mentioned. Greta Fowler, but she was there too. So was Eric Bell. And he always does that. Go back now, fast forward back now to 2006 when he was leaving and he put the second part of his plan in place. Second part of his plan in place was one, to get Omar Davis elected as regional chairman to Region 3. And I was integrally involved in that, very deeply involved in that. Why? Comrade Audrey Smith Facey and myself were supporting my good friend, God bless his soul, may his soul continue resting, please, Alan Rickards. Alan Rickards, we were supporting to be Region 3 chairman. But PJ used his little crew to infiltrate all over the place to convince everybody to put in Omar Davis as regional chairman. The second part, I'm planning. The first part, to set the tone about black man time. That's the first part. Destroy the party organization and turn the PMP into an election machinery instead of a political organization. So that after I leave, the whole damn thing fall apart. We decide, Audrey, I was, cam I was campaign manager for Alan Records. And we decide to support in Alan Records. And PJ employ a whole crew of people to come talk to us. The last meeting I had was Paul Burke. Asked me and Alan Rickards to go to Jamaica House to meet with Danny Buck. Because Danny Buck was probably the only politician at the PMP who had influence over me. Influence. If Danny Buck tell me to do something, I'm going to do it. I'm not ask him nothing. I'm going to do it. Danny Buck can. And Paul Burke asked us to go to a meeting with Danny Buck. And in that meeting, Danny Buck convinced me and Audrey and, and Alan that... Um, to make Omar go forward. To make Omar go forward. Push and everybody, everybody was supporting Alan. Alan would have won hands down. But PJ was doing him like a thing behind the back. Comrades, him is the man behind every damn thing. Up to this day. And that's why I'm just going to burst it out today. Because I am not. I am not going to sit here and watch Mark Golin on the instructions of some other people. Destroy the PMP and write the manly's name out of the PMP. Mark Golden, you can't do it. And I'm not done with you. So, Omar Davis became region chairman. So that's the second part of PJ plan. Omar Davis became region chairman for region three. Of course, Omar Davis is not really a, PM, a, a, a people person. So, for however long he was regional chairman, he never really get no whole of people. I was always supporting I, I was always supporting Omar. So by the time PJ announced the, um, that he's leaving, and Portia was going to run for leader, and Peter Phillips were going to go and run for leader, and that is the expectations of all the PMP, because those were the two who was lining up for it. Lo and behold, Omar Davis also threw his hat in the ring. A lot of machinations took place. And why I'm not going to mention some of those machinations? Because PJ sent him crew. I mean, I call them name because they're doing nothing. They're doing nothing, so I'm not call them name. And PJ, him scatter him crew, you know. Those who join Peter, those who join Portia, and those who over Blight, and a whole host of them with Omar Davis. And Omar Davis' candidacy was not meant for Omar to win. Omar couldn't win. I was surprised that Omar got 200 votes. Omar wasn't supposed to win. Omar's entrance into the race along with Blight's was to ensure that Peter Phillips did not win. Because that's a third part, that's the second part of PGA plan to ensure that Peter Phillips does not become Prime Minister of Jamaica. And let us back up and go way back now and then come back. Let's go around the road and come back. 
Shell Waver scandal. In the Shell Waver scandal, Michael Manley asked PG to resign as minister with responsibility for energy at the time. And he refused to resign. Michael Manley asked him several times to resign. And he, he refused. Finally, Michael Manley write the resignation letter, give it to Peter Phillips and Paul Robertson, and tell them, go to PJ Yard, and make him sign it. Peter Phillips, carrying out his duty from his party leader, went up to PJ Yard, and sat there the entire time, waiting for PJ to sign the letter. PJ refused to sign the letter, and Peter Phillips said, now nah, leave, and tell him sign it. And Peter Phillips did not leave until the, until the letter was signed. P.J. Patterson never, ever forgave Peter Phillips for that one action. He never forgave him. And as I say that, I remember something. I remember the NEC meeting when him announced that him leaving and announced a time frame. Him and Angela was Brownberg was haggling a little bit about how the election would be run. Because Angela was asking him if they're going to do like a, like a primary where all the people who are contending would run and the two that comes out with, with the most votes would go off in a runoff. And um, he was entertaining that for a little bit because, you know, Angela was, um, was thinking that that would not, Angela never want that. So she never want that. So she, but he was thinking about that being a first option. And the NEC shoot it down and say, Everybody just go in there, whoever counted most vote win and count with that. And I remember at that meeting, and I don't remember it was, but it was either Otto Race or Montego Bay. My good friend who passed, God bless his soul, who may light perpetually shine on, my good friend, Franz Clark, turned to me. He and I were heading to where the food was. And him said, You see that little man, the man? That little man, the devious and bad mind and evil PJ Matak. And I said, why you say that? And he kissing teeth and walk away left me. But I figure it out afterwards, because I never elaborate on it. So here we go now. When he became leader, black man time. It was the first shot he fired, which was designed to throw out the man lead him out of the PMP. Second thing, install Omar Davis as regional chairman so that he can run for president and thwart Peter Phillips efforts to be leader and, and prime minister at the time. If it was a straight contest, as most people had expected it to be, between Peter Phillips and Portia Simpson, most conventional wisdom and by delegate count, Peter Phillips would have won. But with Blight and Omar in the race, that was thwarted. So that is second part of his, of his, of his plan. Having succeeded, in dividing and keeping out Portia, he thought, PJ, he thought that with Portia as leader, he would be able to steal up a Uhuru and manipulate the whole, the, the, the Portia's presidents and the Portia's prime ministership. And you spread out him, him tentacles there. It was like a damn octopus with people all over the world. It's him crew of people, the black intelligentsia, all of whom got incredibly rich under his leadership and prime ministership. All of them incredibly rich because PNP people did not benefit from PJ being prime minister. PNP people suffered for the 18 years that PNP was in power. 14 under him. The suffering that took place in this country. People suffered, yes, in Bill Road and bridges and all kind of things and in give ear Jamaica to, to Boot Stewart. He never care about poor people. He made it enrich himself and his friends. That's what PJ did. And I thought that as a good PMP, you just allow them things eh, and move on. But I can't allow it any longer. Mm -mm. I cannot allow it at all. I cannot be bought. I can't buy my silence. I can't buy my to come hugging up with you. I can't pay for it. I would rather get up every day and eat sweet potato and sardine than sell my soul to Uno. 
I'd rather be able to go sleep at night time than to have anything to do with Uno. You see this group of lawyers, this little WhatsApp group that I'm in with the lawyers. One lawyer saying the group this morning that it's one thing he wish for PJ, and that is for PJ to stay up a Uhuru. And all are up there and dead and one dead and can dead. That's what he wish for PJ. The way he think PJ wish it. And all the time that they were saying some things about PJ, I was defending him. And the last live I did, him, him people them go tell him how much me beat him up and him backs. But they never tell him about the good things I said. But you know, I don't care. Him backs about some of the things that I said. The particular things that vex him is about things about Peter Phillips. Or him supported Peter Phillips for, 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 um, for general section, which he did not. He had long standing friendship with the Peerts. I mean, Ernest Peart was part of my Norman Manley crew too. So PJ Patterson have him people them out in every camp carrying out his instructions. And Portia became leader. Now, in Portia's maiden speech as leader, Portia mentioned O.T. Fearclough. I have never heard O.T. Fearclough near mentioned by Portia. Every speech Portia gave him go back. That is why history is a wonderful thing, you know, man. History is a wonderful thing. All you need is a wave rider. And you just ride into 1938. History is a wonderful thing. You can just move into it. And it's like a, it, it transports you to the era, to the time. Portia has people to mention when she speaks. Norman Manley. Marcus Garvey. Nanny. Paul, Bur Paul Bo uh, Bogle. All them people that Portia people. I've never heard Portia mention O.T. Fearclough. But in her maiden speech as leader, she mentioned it. History is a wonderful thing when you can go back and ask for it. She mentioned it in her maiden speech as leader. O.T. Fearclough. And that was written for her and inserted in there. Because now that Portia is leader, P.J. is of the opinion that him can now run the whole OT fear club thing. Because him couldn't do it when he was leader. Him couldn't do it. His focus was not on changing the history of the party then. He must spread out him people and make sure they have enough money to do it for him. And had he tried it that um, during the time when he was leader, he would not have been successful in being prime minister so long. Because he knew he's politically astute. He knew that such an argument would divide the PMP. He knew that such an argument would make people stop concentrating on voting and start concentrating on that. So he would not have brought it up during his time as leader. No, he's looking for people to go run it for him. And lo and behold, he tried with Portia and Portia pushed back. And Portia was the kind of person who you know, I do that. Mm -mm. I do that. Nah, nah. Nah, man, man. Nah, man, man. Push that person who was telling pipe blank and nah, man, man. I've never, I don't know any situation where she did it, but I'm sure that's how she operated. So, starting 2013, he got a group of people who I am absolutely sure got paid. All of them start put out some whole bunch things about this damn scammer, this damn thief. Carl O.T. Fearclough. Jonathan Burke, a right thing. No, I'm no, changing mind about that. But I'm sure he can get paid too. Arnold Bertram, a right thing. Paul McCannon, a right thing. Siaga Nice, a right thing. I mean, everybody get up all into them feelings. I start talking about how O.T. OT Fearclough was the one who whispered in Norman Manley in ears and tell him to go farm party. Who the whole out of the S.U.M.? Talk about them. The whole of them start right things and all of them get paid and all of them was doing it on the instructions of P.J. Patterson. All of them was doing it on the instructions of P.J. Patterson. Why did he choose O.T. Fearclough? He chose O.T. Fearclough and in the absence of facts, the only thing you have is guess. So I'm guessing because guessing is, 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 is really the, 
the prelude to, to an argument when you don't have the facts. I'm guessing that he chose O.T. Fairclough, one, because he's a nobody. Country boy come from Westmoreland, where him come from. That's why the reason why he chose O.T. Fairclough. Two, he chose O.T. Fairclough because he and him went to Calabar. Two of them was on scholarship. And I still don't know if O.T. went to Calabar. My grandson go to Calabar, PJ, let me get him in. Because I him rule Calabar. And when I stand up, when I go up there and I ask them about the Calabar people, them, PJ, e, um, um, Bertram, the whole of them who went to Calabar, people just simply tell you, yes, yes, yes. But when I said OT Fairclough, the young gentleman from the library section said, I forgot to check that for me. <laughs> so OT Fairclough probably never even go to Calabar, I don't know yet. Still checking that out. So he chose O.T. Fairclough for those reasons. Black, poor, pauperized, coming from Westmoreland on scholarship, and him and him did it. And him chose him. Plus, O.T. Fairclough now have nobody. Now nobody for stand up for him, nobody for see him and stuff. So I look at black man for place in there who has no history, no heritage, no antecedents from nobody since we can't find nobody for him. And him, PJ, can now stand up and claim that and be that. And him want this. This is the final part of him leaderboard. To rename, to, to, to give the PMP founder a new name. While Mark them a rename it, he may create a new founder. Jesus of mercy. I want to sit down in there, do nothing. Whatever it is that the sound I do. And the whole owner say, nobody can't change the PMP. And it's normal, man, they found the PMP. Yeah, but I'm not quiet to that, because I can't tell Mark that. Because I have to protect on a little spot. On a little bench. On the sound over the table. Those who, who life has passed them by and trying to make a comeback. Mm. Those who trying to, trying to, to, to build something. Those who just selling them soul. Just to be a part of something. Yeah. I want to know, understand, you know, people. Morris guy. Angela Brownberg. Tony Hilton. Peter Phillips. Philip Paulwell. Cousins. Natalie. Denny's. And the rest of you know, I want to know, understand, you know, that this. Alright? Let's put aside... The traitors and the Judases and what they did to the party. But this, this people is a dangerous thing. It is dangerous. And the world knows PJ's work. So let's reach to Mark now. Let's reach to Mark now. How Mark picked this up. Because Mark not bright enough. Mark is a dim-witted fool that the PMP delegates sold here, sold to. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to take myself off of social media and say I'm going to allow the PMP. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to do something and get back the favor of the Jamaican people. And Mark Golden make me have to come out here with me, half sick self, to come defend Norman Manley Party. When you think we're not going to sit back and make going to do it? When you matter or something? Mark Golden don't know enough about the PMP to be pushing this argument. And PJ now took up the phone and called Mark Golden and tell him to do it. PJ not even having a conversation with him about it. PJ will mention it in a conversation. But the person who is making sure that Mark carry this out is none other than Omar Davis. He's the one that PJ using to get to Mark. To make sure Mark carry him lined about this OT fake cloth guy. Now, PMP people, let me pause here a bit and ask, you know. On a party that Norman Manley founded, PJ and Mark want to name this guy who has one picture. One picture that looks like a mugshot. Looks like him did commit some crime at 80 and they took that picture. So it's his mugshot and Mark colored the mugshot and put it up. And disgrace us. The man is a disgrace. The man is an embarrassment. Disgrace and embarrass the PMP with this man picture up. 
about founder of the PMP, labor right, the past social media tells us we confused. I wouldn't know with history. But goal is an embarrassment. And him have to face it. Because I'm sure that it came from Omar Davis from PG to him. Because he doesn't know enough, he doesn't have no sense for to do that. There's no history. I voted for your club in the PMP. On a think that PMP people in the constituents, in the divisions, in the, in the communities, is going to buy that argument from Uno. Uno think that by doing this, Uno can bring out PMP people to vote. What is the matter with Uno? We know Uno want to destroy the PMP, you know. But Uno have to find another way, because the OT Fair Club thing not going to work out. OT Fair Club, scammer, thief, con artist, a man with no history. We already established that he was around. Went to 80 when he was 18, he came back when he was 34. We don't know him down there, do them same. was a bank. He was not damn bank, he was a clerk in the bank. Bank and man own bank. Never own the bank. He was a clerk in the bank. Him do something down there. And then put him out. Because him have that picture. And that look like him mugshot. And that's the assumption me and me because we can't find nothing else. So he must have done something down in 80. And they put him out. And he come down to Jamaica. And he probably knew a couple of people before he left at 18. He probably knew some people. But he was a black ugly man. I don't think that he knew no other people. Them time there was a height of racism. I don't know. It. And in the height of racism. And you're black. You would have to be a Howard Cook or an Eric Bell or a Casey Burke. Yeah, I, I mean, them black man, they had clout. But a poor ass boy will come from Westmoreland and scholarship of Calabar. Wouldn't know nobody before him left here. Yeah? Maybe Moses are looking a way out when he left here. And he left. And he came back. Couldn't get no work in the bank them here because I was just... Them time, they never, they never hire black people in a bank neither. And if black people in a bank is black people of means. So he never get no work. And he probably, based on some of the history, some of the documents that is there, he probably knew the, the Hill Brothers or the art. He probably know the art. He, he probably knew PJ. And in spite of the fact that PJ is pushing him, and he probably knew PJ, there isn't a picture, not one, with him and PJ. Not even that you can find one picture with him and PJ. There's no picture with him and Norman. Let's have an argument sake. Just for the sake of this argument. That he was a co-founder, as you know, say. Using a head, no? Co-founder. We have picture with Norman assigned Boston name for him. We have picture with Norman with President Kennedy. Norman with Queen Elizabeth. Norman with Harold Macmillan, who was, I think... England Prime Minister at the time. Pictures like dirt with Norman. With every striking soul of the world that you can think of at the time. And none with him. The co-founder, our founder. Not one with him. Come on, people. Want to take black people for? Want to truly take the PMP people them for idiot? One person was on social media talking about how OT for her mother told her that OT Fair Club did a lot for Coburn Gardens. Now... She called it Coburn Gardens, Cockburn Pen, whatever. Cockburn Pen, Coburn Gardens, borders West Central St. Andrew and Southwest St. Andrew. Part of it is Carl, is Carl Blake. Part of it is the Sivright Gardens, a part of my constituency. We know down the, them the place they well. And if O.T. Fairclough came from, was down there doing some work, please, if it's even a garbage pan in name with a pan. Because them the, in the ghetto, people love put people name pan stuff. Everybody name the pan wall. Everybody name the power wall. If you're a gunman who killed people and you did about three decent good acts, you name the power wall. You picture the power wall. Everybody name the power wall and not even one damn garbage pan with OT Fair Club. I'm not talking about him did something. What did he do? What did he do? Absolutely nothing. So PJ's plan is to change the history of the party. To make it a black man party, black man time, to erase the manly's legacy, to remove the manly's 
and I can't help myself. Where are the manlies? Come on. Yes, Joseph, we know so you can't get involved in the politics too much because you work with government. And them, and them, them laborers and have no respect for people's name and legacy and heritage, so they wouldn't, they wouldn't hesitate in firing your ass. So we know you can't get involved. But we are the manly clan and we need to stand up for the grandfather and the father's name. Michael Norman spent many a nights putting this thing together with a nice, quiet group of people. And PJ couldn't choose our word cook and Eric Bell or Greta Fowler. Choose one of them, no? No! He chose the damn scammer. He chose the thief. He chose the man who come from Westmoreland with him, him and him come and go a Calabar together. That's the man he chose. And he couldn't do it when he was leader of the PMP. Because it would have upstaged and affected his plan to be the man that win the most election and the longest serving prime minister. The current state of the People's National Party is caused by many a things. But it started that day when PJ Patterson made the, the decision to have a long campaign period for four candidates for leadership in the People's National Party and when he recruited Omar Davis to run for leadership of the party. That's where that started. And it was all because and of his grievances yeah, all of this is a grievance politics with him. His grievances against Peter Phillips carrying the letter to me, make him sign it. His grievances against Manley. Norman Manley recruited PJ Patterson to the PMP. A young lawyer come back from England. Norman Manley saw the potential in you. And Norman Manley recruited you. We all know that Norman Manley is an honorable man. If O.T. Fairclough was the man who suggested to him, Norman Manley would have said so. I want to put it on Facebook if you don't believe that. If you don't believe that Norman Manley was an honorable man. And if O.T. Fairclough was there beside him, O.T. Fairclough was the secretary for taking notes. He was not general secretary. He was a secretary to write down stuff. When Norman said the genius stuff, then he write them down. When Norman said what I'm going to do, him write it down. Not one picture of this man with Norman Manley. Not one not one with young Michael or young Douglas. We have pictures of our leader, Norman Manley, fight World War I. He was a soldier, a gunner in World War I. The athlete at Jamaica College, Jamaica College, full of things about Norman Manley. And nothing of a calibre about OT Fairclough. I don't mean nothing. Jamaica College, full of things about Norman Manley. The Jamaica Archives, the GIS, the API, JBC, JBC have one big room. No one can call a dunk chase, one can place, pack up a newspaper and lots of stuff that dilapidated place. Somebody should light it a fire. Except that it has a lot of history down there. Holy but things about Norman Manley. In the back to school, I was in Sangster's bookstore up in um, um, the plaza name. And I was in a line because they were letting people in, in small numbers because it was back to school and the place was packed. So I was in a line with my little trolley trying to cash my stuff. Standing by the bookstand, there were four different books with Norman Manley name and picture on it. What are you going to do? Write them over? Put OT Fairclough name on them? Four different books with Norman Manley name and in picture on it. Books that Pitney get taught in school about the founder of the PMP, Norman Manley. About the father of the nation, Norman Manley. National hero, Norman Manley. Soldier, Norman Manley. Athlete, Norman Manley. Father, husband. The man that led us along with his cousin Buster to independence. What are we going to do? We're going to write them over? We're going to talk to the printers and have them print new books with O.T. Fairclough. Um, scam a thief in picture on it. That's what we're going to do. One Christmas, about three Christmases ago, when we were cleaning out the house, I was still finding scrapbooks and, and um, books where the children them do at basic school, primary school, prep school, things that they did every year when it comes to um, 
National Heroes Weekend, Week Time. They're doing things on each hero. Hero. They're doing things. Norman Manley, National Hero, founder of the People's National Party. What are you going to do? Go scrub those things from the annals of the history book. When you're going into the basic schools and the primary schools and the prep schools, them go take off Norman Manley, the picture off of the wall with the seven heroes and the name say, founder of the People's National Party, National Hero. When you're going in there, you go take them off. <laughs> huh? It was always PJ's dream to take away the legacy of Norman Manley and turn it into some kind of black man party. I don't know where him get this damn. That man is a wicked and evil and devious looker man. Franz Clark was right. Him staying up a Yuhuru and I pull everybody's string and I give instructions to him tentacles of millionaires them. Um, when he was in power, he met these millionaires. Him giving instructions to them to destroy and mash up and infiltrate and create all kind of confusion in the PMP. It's all he's doing. And all the people who him line up to buy into it, including Paul Burke, who was a paragon of virtue back in the days when we used to follow up behind him. Him is a disgrace and a disappointment. Him, who on the YO 18th anniversary celebrations, we made a decision to give PJ uh, um, an award. And him, Paul Burke, him raised the roof. We had to cancel the award. Because him raised the roof, him and some other past YO people, we're not calling them name because they're in trouble with. Raised the roof about how could we give PJ an award. And PJ is a capitalist. And them say PJ is a capitalist and a CIA agent. And PJ don't do nothing for the YO. We can't give him an award. And we had to take back the award. And when we decided to take back the award, Michael Manley drove into PMP headquarters on two wheels. And me and Lorenzo and a couple of us stand up in the middle of the yard. And Michael jumped out of the car and said, You, you, you in my office. And Michael go on bad. Or we take back the award. With Paul Burke and him crew, so we must take back and do a PJ. And we have to cancel the 18th anniversary dinner. When I became the like, YO leader, I kept the 25th anniversary dinner and I gave him the award. At the time, Paul Burke never quarreled about that neither, but then he couldn't chat to me. All of this is PJ doing. All of this is his doing. And Mark Golden, the nitwit, the damn clown, is being used to parrot this argument. That OT fear cloth. He moved from founder to co-founder. It was very disturbing in July when everybody was putting out greetings to, to um, birthday greetings to Norman Manley, Angela Brownberg, Mark Golding, and a portion of people, including Peter Phillips, who have retracted since. Putting out this thing about Norman Manley, co-founder of the PMP. What's the matter? We don't know what we're doing. Mm. What are we doing? Only know that people out there watching you know. Only know that. Only know that people out there watching you know. The PMP people them are watching you know. They are watching you know. They are hearing you know. They are watching you know. Now what you wanna do? Norman Manley, founder of the People's National Party, father of the nation. And uno want change that to OT Fear Club. Let me ask you a question. This question is of Philip Paulwell, the connection boss. You are still the real connection boss. Philip Paulwell is a member of parliament for Kingston East and Port Royal. I've said good because God saw his have issues when you know say it right. Kingston East and Port Royal. That was Michael Manley consequence. What? 
Philip Paul will go tell the people them in Kingston East and Port Royal, say. Them former MP, son of the founder, the PMP leader, is, well, is not son of the founder anymore because the founder is O.T. Fairclough. Philip Paul is going to tell them that. Philip Paul is going to campaign in Kingston East and Port Royal on the platform and talking about O.T. Fairclough, this black ningrin. And yeah, I might sound a little bit of racist when I say I'm this black. But we don't want them, man. The man couldn't farm PMP. There's no way that could have happened. Whenever you can show us a picture, something the man write, a letter. The man was part of the group of people that formed the, the public opinion newspaper. Yet there is nothing that he wrote. Are you saying that everything done by the Gleaner Company about Norman Malik and the Gleaner Company have um, the heroes thing them different? Are, are you saying that everything down there is a lie? Are you saying that everything down in the local place that should burn down on JBC is a lie? Are you saying that all the books is a lie? Are you going to go into the basic schools, the primary schools? Are you going to ask the printers of the exercise books them with the errors them on it to stop putting them on it? Are you going to take him out for the money? And put on that scamming picture. What are, what are they doing? Seriously. Are you going to ask Imani Duncan? Who is going to win back now? Michael Manley seat. To go down there. Go tell our people them. Who she have to go get for vote for her. That Norman Manley is not the founder of the PMP. Seriously. Even though you are alone. Me say I do it. My comments. Nobody else will follow you. But you are the leader. As dim witted and stupid and as you are, you are the leader. And you have people that tell you something that is not true. I will tell you already say it's not true. Are you not listening? So no me have got to take some action against you know. If it's going to be me, that group of lawyers that lawyers that I have in a group with. And I tell you I'm not a lawyer. In other group because I'm like, oh well, I write and I give them arguments. So them like to have me in there. Anyhow, Mark Golden ever put out that thing again that OT Fair Club is a founder, the PMP, our co-founder. We are going to sue you. You will be getting a lawsuit from a group of PMP people if you ever put out that lie again. And when we sue you, we're going to name PJ Patterson night. And then we're going to go up on Uhuru with two placards, if it's even me and two smarty alone. And we're going to demonstrate against PJ. And they can't do with nothing. Because we're going to find public property. And we're going to rage demonstration against you. What's the matter with you? What is wrong with you? And then when Mark put out that thing on his Facebook page, I don't look and through the page. I don't look for nobody's Facebook page. Every information I get is sent to me. And I got a screenshot of all the people who liked the page, who commented on the page. All the people who said, Happy birthday, OT Fairclough. And I did not recognize a single name on that list except for one. I did not recognize as I, I chalked them up to me labor rights or risers who don't know nothing about PMP. So they don't bother me. But there was one name, one single name on that list that made my stomach churn, turn over in knots. Last time my stomach churn and turn over in knots like that. It was nice. <laughs> but this one, Really, really got me, knocked me for six. When I saw the name of the PMP person wishing happy birthday to OT Fairclough. And I get no pleasure. I can tell you this. It might look that way, but I don't. I do not get any pleasure from saying what I'm about to say. I get no pleasure from it. It hurt me to my core that I have to go say this. But when you set yourself up like this, like whores and prostitutes, 
they're going to leave people like me no choice but to come on social media and call on the whores and prostitutes. This one person on Mark Golden page wishing OT fake love happy birthday was Beverly and this manly Duncan. What a woman love name. Beverly Anderson Manley Duncan Wishing O.T. Fearclough A happy birthday When her son The son that she and Michael has together When he was graduating from Campion College Was it him? Or Natasha, I don't remember which one of them was graduating. One of them was graduating from Campion College. And Beverly Manley was a guest speaker at the graduation ceremony. And Michael just went as a father. Oh, we end up up there. Now they look a ladder. Now look a vehicle. Not the ladder. I think one, one, one of them, other one had just come down. Was because Tony Bogues. And Marva, who was Michael Manley's secretary, gave Assad and myself sheets of Michael book that he was writing at the time and asked us to proofread them and make sure we talk to Man Michael before we change anything. That's how we ended up there at that graduation. And she was the guest speaker. And she, when she got up to speak, to guest speak, she gave her salutations. Recognizing everyone on the platform, recognize the important people in the audience. And then she proceeded to say, last but not least, I recognize my baby father, Michael. That left me with an impression. I never knew it then, but I know now that you were a butto when you said that. Michael took it with a smile because he was a man of class. Took it with a smile. Now Beverly Manley, Beverly Anderson Manley Duncan, your Michael divorce and you kept the man name. On the divorce and you kept the man name. The man married another woman and you kept the man name. What kind of woman does that? But you kept the man name. And you married again and you still keep the man name. And you the on Mark page, I wish OT Fearclough, happy birthday. You're a disgrace. You're a disappointment and a damn disgrace. And it gives me no pleasure to say that because you... These people that we looked up to when we were young, we looked up to these people. These people who used to show us the way and tell us stuff that we don't forget. And then we live to see them become worse than what they say we should not be. Selling your soul just because you want to be in that space. Selling out the manly legacy just because you want to be close with Mark and still have the damn man name. Drop the man name, man. Take up Fearclough. Call yourself Beverly Duncan, Fearclough, whatever. Drop the manly name. Drop, drop the manly name, man. And if I was ever Glyn Manley, I petition the code for you to drop the damn name. Because the man have a wife and dead left him wife. You're a disgrace. You're a damn disappointment and a damn disgrace. But you're on Facebook, I wish OTV Club happy birthday while you're keeping the man name. And that is what one is about to destroy the PMP and take away Norman Manley's legacy. And that is what PG's intention is. And I'm not going to alone. Just want to fire the first shot on the first one. I'm making a no. Not going to alone. Whatever it takes. If it's just me alone, we're not going to alone. Not going to alone. Not going to alone to confuse the PMP people. Them to confuse the Jamaican public. Jesus, what are you going to do? What the hell are you going to do? Send um, Patricia Duncan Sutherland to go visit all the basic school and tell them that Norman Manley is not the founder of the PMP. 
Because only that idiot could possibly be thinking of a job like that. What are you do? Call the printers and tell them for all them book the normal man the name on it. When I need to print them over. And put the scammer picture on it. Picture of a scammer. A mugshot of a man who nobody knew. Nobody still don't know. And PJ's damn wet dream. The final part I'm wet dream. I think this is the part where I'm actually come. To see this part get done. He employed a whole host of people to start writing things about OT fake love. And all of them get paid. To start writing it. And start saying it. And start parroting it. I'll Paul Murky. We didn't know what know this. I go back. I went back. I went back on the rave, wave rider. I went back in history. And remember some of Paul Burke's speech them after tw between 2013 and 2017 or thereabout. And then get up in a conference and chatting shit about voting fake, fake love and all kind of things. I get it. I get it now. I'm slow. Please. I basic school ago. But I get it now. It has been a long planned event. And PJ Patterson is the leader of that little clique. And cause us to be where we are right now. Now, no, I'm going to him. And I want, I'm going to write Portia a letter to apologize to her for what I'm about to say. As a matter of fact, I, write, I draft the letter already. And I'm going to carry it up on the house, go deliver it. And plead with her husband to read it to her. I'm going to admit to her in the letter what I'm about to say. And I'm going to ask her to please forgive me. I didn't mean to hurt her when I said it. But when Portia was leader, and it became clear that Portia was not well, the natural thing to do at the time was to help her to transit to, to um to move on. But that moving on would have would have had to take place when she was leader and prime minister. And that moving on would then mean that Peter Phillips would become prime minister. There was no if and but about that. And what the greatest conspiracy that put us in this position where we are now. In opposition and not even in good good opposition because i mean i could live with us being in opposition if we're in good good opposition but this is just ridiculous this is not this is not an opposition this is just something this is not like a little party shop party we are going and you have a little man we say about the lead and <laughs> i mean and pj percival noel james patterson spread out in tentacles again and had his people inside to ensure that Portia stayed. Just to ensure that Peter Phillips don't become prime minister. And they had her stay there. And everybody was gathered around her. Including that high ranking former officer. Who was down in South East Saint and plotting to lose PMP seat. Him was a part of that. And many more. I don't mind calling the name. Don't, don't fret. I don't mind calling the name. Because I know that him was the architect and the leader of that. Just a leader near me, I call. Just to make sure that Peter Phillips don't become prime minister. The plan is, let Portia stay and all out to get around her and each person run some part of the government. Jamaican people need to know this. And if I call in the name, someone is going to have to go run and hide. So I'm not call her by the name. But it was PJ's plan. He was the... He was the architect of that plan. And so, Portia, who I knew, who, who I knew then, wanted to, wanted to go home. She, she wanted to go home. But no, they would not allow her to. Not allow her to. I remember the NEC, the two-day NEC meeting up at Huey, when they were argue about Joan Garden Webley admission to PMP. And I mean, she came to the meeting the Sunday. <laughs> I 
I write her a letter and apologize to her for saying all of this. But P.J. Patterson has been the Zen master in all of this. He is the one who has spread his tentacles like a damn octopus. With all of his people around him. And spread them out and scatter them in different places and wares. And they can afford to because he made them multimillionaire. That's all he did when he was prime minister. And if you go out into the country, like I have, P <coughs> sorry, the PMP people will tell you that not never go on for them during them time. That is true. Not never really go on for PMP people them time. Eh? Enough things go on for <laughs> Wolipa big man. That was PJ's governance. Not never go on, but he had a well oil election machinery and when that machine when he left that machine will fail because nobody knew how to run it it was something with just him and him gangster them they knew how to make that work the part and when he left the party fell apart because there was no political organization in place to catch it to hold it to pick it up he left nothing a shell of a party because he destroyed Everything that made us a political movement and organization, and he built an election machinery. A machinery that failed after he left because it's just him and him gangsters them around it. And the people of around Portia not recognizing that it was a, a election machinery that he had run by some gangsters. Because I am sure if they knew, they wouldn't have been so rabid about leaving people out. Because they did. Was they were rabid, some of them was rabid about leaving people out. People like, no, nah, call them, leave them alone. They may do me nothing. Let's not mix up nobody tonight. Just the few where we are mixed up. So we had no political machinery. We had an election machinery. A well-tuned up one. That he built with them gangsters. And when he left, the whole damn thing fall. I mean, it just fell apart. Completely. And when people look around, there was nothing. Nothing. No organizations, the constituencies, no organizations in the region. Just a election machinery. And when the time come, he just deploys people and the machinery kicked in. And when he left, I don't know if he had his part of his wet dream was to continue to run that from Uhuru. I don't know if that was a part of his, if his wet dream. But it fell apart. Nobody knew what to do. We were moving in the dark. Everybody pretending to know what they were supposed to do. But we're, no, they didn't know what to do. But then, God sent Portia what she needed. With the help of Katie Knight and a few others, the man at Phelps thing came and she listened. I was able to take us to victory in 2011. Forgive my comments for this stiffer thing. And that's how we won in 2011 on her coattails by sheer love and honor. And ad adoration from the Jamaican public with the help of KD Knight leading that thing and hitting the country with her with that bus ride. There was no no political organization to fall back on. And he left with his election machine recruit. And we were left in the dark. And it's been one thing after the other since. And here we are, left with a Lincoln Poop to be the leader who putting out, ferreting out putting out false information. Mark Golden, I challenge you. Put out the next thing about OT Fear Club being your founder or co-founder of the PMP and a lawsuit. Don't love lawsuit, so I'm going to show you. This will reach you. And dearly, I would be on your case. Remember, you know, I had planned to just sit this out, low it, see if the election, I got a call, a, a traveling the country, a visiting some deep, deep, dark places. PMP people, them talking to me. And every time I bring up the the organization, 
The OT fear club thing is not something I brought up on the road, you know. It's PMP people bring it up. I mean, when I said James are one well known PMP man of me, I leave him tell me for so long and buy an ex beer, give me and proceed to educate me about this foolishness with it with OT fear club. And I sat with him and he educated me. Yeah. So start Monday morning. We need to start call the publishers and tell them so we take off Norman Manly name and, and in pictures them off of the book them with them have in their school. And well, and I go to my St. Mary's base school and tell them to take down all of my pictures when a Norman Manly I talk to my founder, PMP. Well, I'm going to go S U M. And I can't take Norman Manly name out of the history of the annals. And the Manly clan are coming to visit you know. When you can't take Norman Manley name out of the annals of history. Norman Manley is the founding father of the nation and founder of the People's National Party. Soldier, statesman, athlete. I believe Jamaica was the first country that got universal adult suffrage. Am I right, Michelle? Isn't Jamaica the first country in the world to pass universal adult suffrage? I believe I'm right. Correct me if I'm wrong, Michelle. Or maybe this, and then we went on to show some other country. Where did I read that? About how to get it done. Norman Manley did that. Bustaman to form the JLP and Norman Manley taught him how to read and write. Yeah, I don't know if that's true, but that's why I said that. <laughs> that could be true. But seriously, I know. I know you're all in there telling on yourself that you're <clears throat> in there doing whatever it is that you think you're doing. If it makes you sleep better at night, then fine, go on, tell on yourself it. That you're in there doing something good. Keeping the party together. Whatever it is that you're not telling yourself. Keep telling yourself that. But let me remind you. Know, that there are some things you can't keep silent on. There are some things that you just cannot keep silence on. Because if you're silent on it. It means that you're a part of it. It means that you support it. Your silence on this. We're well, not going to feel it, you know. Trust me. We're not going to feel it from the voters, you know. If we never know where I know. We're not going to feel it from the voters. And then this. This is not something I discuss with PMP people. I don't want to go to discuss this with PMP people. When I'm going to drive in a PMP place and sit down and, and hold the vibes and hold conversation with PMP people. I want to talk to them about other things. They want life. What go on with them? How them feel about them party? How them feel about them country? I, 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 talk, I don't want to talk this with them. We're not supposed to talk this with them. This is one of the things that are set in history. This cannot be changed. It cannot be changed. And we will be drafting a lawsuit against Mark Golden. If you ever, ever put that out again. That O.T. Fairclough is the founder or co-founder of the People's National Party. Put it out again. And I'm going to rage a war against the kind you have never seen before. You think anything gone yet out of war gone, you think that was nothing? When the Lord said, I'm going to burn it down to the ground. That argument. And do with it. If you continue to want to remove Norman Manley from the annals of history. And Beverly Manley go take off the Manley name of your name. I'm going to hold up Duncan and, and Anderson and put on fake love on it. And leave Michael Manley name alone. And comrades, you can't be quiet about it. I'm not asking you to go beat up on the leader because I'm a leader. I'm a leader. Some things you can't remain silent on. You just can't remain silent. And some things, some things are important. And this is one of them. And I'm a one-woman wrecking crew. And I have a little crew with me.
And we ain't afraid to go anywhere. We will be guests and ask somebody to buy us some water. Just to go stand up out of somewhere with a plaque on for make us know how we feel about it. Mm -hmm. We will make us like misery. Remember, say, I'm an employee. I'm an employee. I have nothing for do. Just beg some gas, drive go up a OLO. Beg some gas, drive go up a PAP headquarters. Beg some gas and drive go up a Euro. With my plaque to tell PJ, take him hands out of PMP now. A time for him leave PMP alone. Make him prosper. Stop it with him. Look a wet dream plan. Him carry this far and destroy the party. The fabric of the party has been destroyed by him. And now him want some black man for own it. And that Michael Manley. I will not going to allow it. We just not go allow it. That's all there is to it. I embrace the job that God gave me. This job. To hold you accountable. To war you. I embrace it. I embrace it. Not afraid of it. I'm embracing it. And the whole of you in there. That remaining silent on this issue. <laughs> on this issue. Some things you can't remain silent about. People. So. I'm not going to say anything about the demonstration. That it was led by Dayton Campbell. I don't have. This man out there as the face of the party leading demonstration about dead babies. Don't forget how him deal with babies, you know. The 13-year-old one them and the 14-year-old one them. I want to have him a lead demonstration about dead babies. And him not answer yet to all the other, the older babies them. A babies them, you know. The 13 and 14-year-old them. Them they have babies too. I want to have him a lead demonstration. And doctor guy, the one side, looking like a hostage. When he's supposed to be out there. We will talk about that whole scenario next time. I just want to put Mark Golden on watch. And I want PJ Patterson to know that him dep on my radar now. And I do not care. Comrades, share the live. Make sure everybody see it. Thank you for joining me. Keep safe. Keep the children safe. God bless you. Good night.